what is quantum computing and how does it work? Well, there's a race going on, a race between China, the United States, between IBM and Google, a race to dominate the next generation of computers because Silicon Valley could become a rust belt. Think about that. The digital computer of today could be like the abacus of years gone by. We're talking about the computer of today could become obsolete with this race to perfect the next generation which is quantum computers. Instead of computing on transistors, we're computing on atoms. Think about that. This is the ultimate computer. There's nothing smaller than what you can do with atoms, and that's what these quantum computers compute with. And it raises all sorts of problems. The CIA is worried that quantum computers will break right through the CIA, and any, any kind of a barrier being placed around your secrets. Industries are going to be created out of nothing. Medicine is going to be turned upside down. Energy production, society, entertainment, every aspect of society will be changed with quantum computers. And that's why there's this race, a race to perfect the quantum computer. How far from the finish line do you think they are? Uh, we're well, still years away. First of all, we've actually built one. Uh, different companies are fielding quantum computers. They're kind of primitive. But some computers, some quantum computers, are actually millions of times more powerful than our supercomputer for certain definite tasks. But it may take another decade or so before we get all the, all the kinks out and it becomes part of everyday life. But it's going to change everything in the same way that the transistor changed everything. The world economy, medicine, art, science, everything was changed with the microchip. Same thing with the quantum computer. It's, it's very difficult for us. There's only been a few uh, science fiction authors who have been able to do this successfully where they can accurately predict what the future is going to look like. I mean, even they're off usually. You know, H.G. Wells had some pretty good ideas. But w are we looking at something that we almost don't have a reference for, that it's so mind-blowingly different and much more powerful than anything we've experienced so far? that it's, it's difficult for us to imagine how much it's gonna change the world? Well, to imagine how it's gonna change the world, think of the progression of the computer. For thousands of years, the computer was basically an analog device. We used sticks, beads, uh, levers, gears, pulleys, cranks in order to do simple calculations. That was the first era of computation. And that meant that we could keep track of things, which we couldn't do before. Then World War II hit, and all of a sudden we had to break the German code and that required using electricity and using all sorts of vacuum tubes to crack the German code. And then we went into the second era where we compute on digital and binary. So zeros and ones, zeros and ones. Now we're entering the third era, a natural progression from gears, levers, pulleys to vacuum tubes and transistors and then to atoms. This is the final step in the evolution of the computer. When we compute on atoms, these are atomic computers, nothing more powerful than that. Whew. So when, when you think about how much it would change life as we know it, that's when things get difficult to understand, right? Because if we think about just trying to imagine what it would be like living in New York City in 1820, and then imagining what it's like today, 200 years later, they would have never been able to guess. What, what kind of things is going to change? Everything. Uh, for example, think of biology and medicine. To test a drug, what do we do? We get thousands, hundreds of different kinds of petri dishes, put the drug in, put the tissue in, and just cross your fingers and hope and pray that of these thousands of dishes, one of them will create a super wonder drug. That's why it costs upwards of a billion dollars to market the next wonder drug, because it's all done by trial and error. Now, think of putting that in the memory of a supercomputer, a quantum computer. It, it analyzes whether or not germs can be destroyed by this substance at the speed of light. Not just one dish, but hundreds, thousands of dishes of these things can be tested at the same time in the memory the memory of a computer. So we're talking about digital medicine, 
digital chemistry, virtual chemistry. Think about that. Chemistry without chemicals. Mm. Biology without biology. So that's the, that's the beauty of this technology, that we can mimic atoms. We can mimic molecules and do virtual experiments in the memory of a computer rather than using test tubes like we used to do, uh, that, that we still do today. And we could possibly see things that are just theoretical right now, like with medicine, like regenerating limbs or regrowing spinal tissue for a person who's been paralyzed, things along those lines. In fact, even immortality is on the table. Uh, realize that scientists who've looked at the aging process realize that the reason why we never understood aging is that aging is the buildup of error. That's what aging is, the buildup of mistakes in the replication of DNA. But what happens if you could put DNA in a computer? Then you can see where the aging takes place. And then we can begin perhaps to slow down the aging process, maybe even become immortal. What about reversing it? What about uh, old women become young hot ladies again? Uh, I well, think that'd be a problem. Everything's on the table because we're talking about changing the fabric of life itself. You know, the greatest quantum computer is Mother Nature. Think about it. How does Mother Nature do photosynthesis? Yeah. How does Ma Mother Nature create uh, trees and flowers out of nothing? Right. It's all chemicals and molecules. That's what quantum computers can do. 